summer, or as I always say, it's afternoon here for us in the UK. I know some of you are joining you are joining us from uh, uh, the North uh, North America and from all, all sorts of uh, parts of the world. But wherever you are in the world, you are very very welcome. As always, before we start, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on the screen. As you know, trading can be a very risky business, so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Right. As we've lost a few minutes, I'll just uh, rattle through the next literally two more slides. As you, Those of you who come along regularly will know we'll be looking at the charts through the prism of volume price analysis. What is volume price analysis? Well, all the details you can find on the books that are up on Amazon and this is essentially looking at the chart through the prism of uh, price action and volume to try and determine whether what you're seeing on the chart is actually a valid move or not because as you know this is a very very um, as, this, as I think I say in Australia a very shonky business uh, lots of manipulation lots of uh, nasty traps and tricks uh, to uh, you know to uh, to to make you part with your money and we certainly don't want to do that but once you can read the chart with price action and with volume you will certainly have a, a tremendous advantage but VPA is it, it's 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 more than that we've, we've expanded that uh, principal concept if you like to include support and resistance candles candle patterns and crucially time and that's not just the time chart that <clears throat> excuse me, you're actually trading, but looking at what you're seeing on the chart in multiple time frames, because that also helps you to uh, judge whether the move that may be happening, say, on a five minute chart, which is the chart that perhaps you like to take your trade on, is it, are you perhaps trading a pullback? Are you trading a, you know, a half decent correction? Uh, of a move that is completely contra to what is happening on a slower time frame. And it's really important to be able to uh, look at price action in multiple time frames and to actually hold in your head this sort of um, this paradox, if you like, that yes, we may be seeing the, the, uh, the price action move up very nicely in our preferred, uh, you know, our chart of choice where we take the uh, uh, or, uh, our trades, but we could actually be uh, trading against the, the flow, if you like, in a slower time frame. It's perfectly fine. It has all sorts of other implications in terms of risk. It's obviously possibly going to uh, be more risky. You're not going to be in that trade very long, and you have to be very, very tight with your stops. The best way to see it is actually in action. But before we move to the charts, um, to help with the concept of VPA, uh, what we've done is we've published a companion book to uh, the VPA book, and that is sort of examples, uh, annotated examples. There's about two, there's over 200 in this one, uh, which accompanies the VPA book, and it's the examples are taken uh, in this book from stocks, indices, and commodities. There's also a version for the forex market. So that's what I wanted to say uh, for the benefit of those of you who perhaps are coming along for the first time. Technical analysis uh, based on BPA is obviously only one aspect of what we have to consider as traders. Now, those of you who are already on our forex trading program will know that it's not just technical analysis that we look at uh, when uh, trying to determine uh, what is uh, like, you know, what is going on in the, in, in the market and certainly with the currency and currency pairs of our choice, we look at the fundamental news. But we also look at what we call the related market because all the, the capital markets of which there are four, the forex market, the bond market, uh, the, um, uh, the equity market and the commodities market, they're all related. They, they, they all... Um, uh, they, they all sort of bounce off each other. There are correlations. There are correlations between certain currencies and other in instruments in other markets. What happens in one market will uh, perhaps lead what is happening in another. So, it, you know, you have to look, you have to look at the market in in its entirety, not just focus on the one chart that maybe you are looking to take a trade on. And today has been a really good example because obviously those you know if you've been paying attention to your uh, news feeds, you will know and the um 
and the fundamental news. This has been the event of the day, uh, which is the, uh, the J Powell. In fact, the, the event of the week is what's called the Jackson Hole Symposium. It's, it's a sort of central bank hooli that happens uh, year this this year it's virtual because obviously because of the pandemic and you know the market has been waiting uh, uh jay powell has kicked it off but he's they've also been waiting to see whether he was going to make any uh an announcement um, um a statement about how the fed and really when the fed speaks he's really speaking for the other central banks as well about inflation those of you on our program will understand you know this in in, in greater detail and if you don't um you know if if you're not aware of, of why you have to track inflation not just from a personal basis but why the market and the central banks are obsessed with it at the moment um it's really important that you begin to understand because it will impact what is happening across the markets whatever you trade whatever the central banks are doing at the moment it's going to have an impact not just in the forex market to do with the currencies but also in the equity market the bond market and uh, then spill over into the commodity uh, market as well and essentially in case you don't know central banks have set themselves what they call this two percent target for inflation and it's just an arbitrary number that they sort of plucked in there it could have been 2.4 it could have been 1.8 no two percent is the figure that they would like inflation to run at it's a bit like goldilocks the central banks like their economies to be like goldilocks not too hot not too cold. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be they don't seem to um, uh, be able to produce that effect either because events, as we've seen with the virus, or they allow things to get completely out of hand, as we saw in 2000 when you know uh, the tech, uh, the Nasdaq sort of soared, and then there was you know uh, there was a huge bust, as it were. But essentially, this two percent. Um, is this, you know, this this um, this figure, if you like? Now, what he has basically said is that they're going to be more flexible in this two percent. And what he's actually saying is that they are going to be prepared to um, to maybe let it run uh, more, higher than two percent. That has all sorts of implications because back in the day when certainly David and I were much younger, inflation was, you know, the one thing that it had to be kept as low as possible because it destroys uh, savings, it, you know, things become very, very expensive, et cetera, et cetera. But banks now are actively trying to drive inflation into the market, and they are doing that by printing lots and lots of, uh, of, of money, if you like, because the more money you have uh, that's circulating around, then, you know, inflation goes up. We end up, you know, you could end up somewhere like Zimbabwe, the value of money uh, uh, decreases so he opened the symposium he has said this what has been the market reaction well it's been a bit sort of all over the place really uh, there was the usual volatility well you usually have the volatility at the beginning of the uh, market open if we look if we take the YM because the YM is a is a good example of uh, one of the uh, of the uh, the indices uh, initially, it, it went up, uh, then it went down, and now it's kind of trying to creep up higher. Then it went into consolidation, and in fact, it's now taking taken a little bit of a uh, of a dive, as it were. The VIX is is going up. The dollar uh, went down um, first; it went up, then it went down. So, in, and gold, which has always been a a if you like the uh, the one um, if you like um, uh, market, the one instrument where you know people go rush have been rushing into gold on the fear of inflation and what the Fed is going to do. They want to drive inflation uh, in, into the economy uh, beyond, not just at 2%, but beyond 2%. In fact, gold actually fell, as we can see here. This is the 10-minute chart. And you think, well, well, why did that happen? The Fed, you have to kind of think of it in a slightly counterintuitive way. In a way, the Fed having said that they are you know they are you know they have they've becoming more flexible on this two percent target that is just now an average it kind of tells people well maybe they're not going to succeed you know inflation is is 
driving inflation higher is actually going to be a problem. It's certainly been a problem in Japan uh, for the last 20 years or so. They, they've had a, they, no matter how much QE they seem to uh, indulge in, uh, the, um, the uh, you know, inflation is still very, very low. So that could be the reaction from the um, from the gold market. Now, there is also another instrument for those of you who um, who want to know a little bit about this, and this is called the tip. The tips tips are uh, treasury inflation protection securities. They're like a, a form of bond, and uh, people buy them. They, they, people buy them when they think inflation is going to be out of control because it protects you against the effects of inflation. And this is an ETF. And ETFs are a great way to try and um, get a feel for what market sentiment, sentiment is, you know, what different parts that, you know, you don't, you don't have to invest in them unless you particularly want to, but it gives you uh, an an insight into what the market is thinking, and the tips certain the tip certainly um, is uh, is an ETF which is and if you are trading gold, I would probably suggest you keep an eye on this as well because they kind of uh, uh, correlate with one another. So if the um, if you know if the tip is rising, um, they think inflation is going to be rising. Gold will tend to be rising, but this is on the on the daily chart. It's been a little bit. It's gone into um, sideways, as, as it were, pretty much reflecting what gold has been doing. It went up as with gold. It's had a bit of a pullback, and now it's moving sideways. So it's kind of reflecting this um, this uncertainty that the market has. That no one's really sure uh, what you know, what the central banks are, you know, whether what the central banks are doing. Are, is going to succeed or not? And obviously, if that if that falls, then the uh, the assumption is that inflation there isn't going to be any inflation. Now, gold might may still rise because gold also rises not just because of inflation, because the whole financial system has been completely, I would say, destroyed. But it's uh, you know there's no value left in money because that's what we're talking in paper, if you like, whether that's money or or uh, bonds, if you like. So it's, it's you know, the, you could argue it uh, both ways, as it were. So that's where we are at the moment within reaction to what has been going on um, with the uh, with the beginning of, uh, of Jackson Hole. I think the Canadian uh, uh, um, governor has just been speaking. It's his name, Markham. He's a new guy. So you have to sort of keep you know, wherever you are in the world, if you're in Canada and you're a trader and you're an investor, you really need to know who your central bank is and you know, get to know the personalities. It's one of the things we say on our program that our traders must do. So, and particularly if you're going to trade a currency, um, a Canadian dollar is your one of your preferred, or here in the UK we have obviously the British pound. It's really important that you get to know who your central bank is, who are the members of the central bank, who carry weight on uh, in um, on the committees because certainly with the Fed obviously the chair does and and uh, uh, and the the vice chair but within on the Fed uh, committee some members don't carry uh, don't vote they don't have the uh, voting rights they kind of rotate them so when one of the Fed's uh, uh, people come up you know pop up in the media um, if they are a voting member then their words are going to carry more weight if you like in the market but if they're a non-voting member yeah people say well that's awfully interesting but he or she's not going to have much of an, an impact at the next meeting because they don't have a vote so it's really really important that you uh, understand what the central bank is up to what is the monetary policy of the central bank no matter what you trade with with equities commodities and certainly with the uh, a currency market then you really really must know so that's where we are at the moment with the YM David has got the uh, the faster time frame chart. So the other question we always get asked is, well, what do you do when you have this kind of price action? Obviously, this is a this is the market reaction and knee jerk reaction to um, uh, you know whatever an announcement, um, a piece of news. It could be anything. You get these uh, these huge candles. We do have an indicator that we've developed called the volatility indicator, which is which fires in real time, which tells us a that volatility has come into the market. It, and the price is now outside of its average true range. What can we expect? The expectation is that the price will usually retrace to within the, the spread of the candle. We normally get a, a, a congestion. 
in this case, yeah, another one was fired up, and then a third one. This is as the um, not only did it coincide with uh, the the open coincided with Powell's speech. Then you had one to uh, the uh, the downside, as we as we saw here. We had a retrace in, but essentially what happens when this shaking of the market it starts to calm the 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 next stage is actually a congestion phase the market will go sideways because everything has to calm down and we have to wait and see you know what is the eventual direction and in fact with the ym it is as you see here after this uh, after the volatility it did actually go sideways whether there were a trading opportunities, this is a 10-minute chart, whether there were trading opportunities in these big candles in the congestion phase, it really there might have been, because you as a trader, you might be trading on the second chart, a tick chart, a Renko chart, a uh, one or two minute chart. There would have been a, a potential trade to be taken. If you're on the slightly slower time frames, as I am here on the, on, on the 10 minute, then you would certainly want to wait for a very firm pull away from this uh, volume point of control. It's the area on the chart, it's the fulcrum of the chart. There's no real direction in this particular time frame. And there was a really nice example of this with a cable. Um, and as I said, but it could, it could have been anything. Uh, what I have here, I have a three-minute chart, a five-minute chart, I have a Renko chart uh, for cable, and I also have a chart on the 10-minute uh, minute for cable with levels. Now, when I said earlier, the, the one thing um, uh, that is also critical at times of volatility is to, is to have some way of marking on your chart key support and resistance levels. We've developed very specific indicators for this function um, because support and resistance is such a huge, huge part of VPA price action volume, but support and resistance is like, you know, right up there with them, with it. Because even when price is very volatile, it will still respect those levels. It may overshoot them slightly, but it will generally respect these key levels. And we and this is, if you like, the equivalent of what happened on the 10-minute chart with a cable reflecting what was going on with the US dollar. As I said, it went down, then it went, uh, then it went back, uh, went back up. Very, very dramatic. You can see the huge widths to these candles. But look, it it kind of hit what this is the R4. Um, this is the base on, on Camarilla, but you know, you might use a moving average, you might use a, a Fibonacci level, it really doesn't matter. But somewhere on one of your charts, you have to have a, a, a um, some kind of um, some kind of indicator which tells you this is an important level uh, for the market. And in fact, after this, uh, the volatility this too went into a congestion between, as we can see here, the S1, and it actually just fell. It never made the S4 at the bottom of the chart. It sort of it it, it sort of hung around the uh, the R3. And in fact, the little piece of price action that I was looking at is once that comes, that always markets don't stay in congestion forever. They eventually do have to find a, a, a direction. In fact, there's this really nice little move. It wasn't very big. It was a nice little move, but it went straight into again. But this is where the levels came into play once again. And in fact, there's been a little reversal and it's now going between the R1 and, S, uh, and the S1. But given the time of day, it's probably not unreasonable to expect that it will go back into congestion. And to help us, particularly when markets are so volatile, is, is to move to combine your time chart with a non-time based chart. We've developed, uh, David and I use uh, a Renko. Sometimes David also uses his tick charts as well. But the Renko chart, it kind of, it, a, it smooths everything so you don't get any wicks to the bricks that's what they are they're not they're not candles they're called renko means brick that's the first thing and secondly the the value of these bricks um that's been calculated for me by our renko optimizer which is now these are set at 2.9 so every time 2.9 pips goes through the market one of these little bricks is um is is, is completed as it were on this chart i also have uh, one of our other indicators, which is what we call the accumulation distribution indicator. And it basically measures the strength of 
support and resistance. So the thicker the, the thicker the lines, the, the 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 stronger, if you like, either the support or the resistance. And this was this little move higher. I was off the S3, ran straight up here, a little bit of sideways. And how we use this in uh, how we use the Renko, or how we've combined it with our other indicators is we have developed. Um, trend indicators, the trend dot, which is this, as you can see, is very, very close to the market, and we have the trend monitor. And it's it's very it's a very straightforward way of using the indicator. First of all, you look at the structure of the price action on the chart, and we it's very clear what was going on here. We can see the congestion. This was after all, all the volatility. You know, it wasn't there was no firm they would try to break away from these regions and it kept pulling back again. And what happens, how that's reflected, it's reflected in these constant changes in not only the trend dot but the trend monitor. But once you have, if you like, a, a break from a significant level be it based on uh, price or volume or a combination of, of the two, and you start to get these, these uh, you know, the trend dots consistently blue, and this is a consistently bright blue, you could say, do you know what, that's probably, you know, that looks like a half decent, uh, half decent break. And you would also compare it with the time chart to see whether the volume is also supporting the candles on the chart. And in this occasion, it did. And also, it's, you know, you know, you can see the uh, it's moved away from this strong region of resistance. And the nice thing about breakaway trading, I personally, I always think, is where your stop loss is, because these levels here, they're there for your stop loss. So in a way, in a, in a breakout trading and a breakaway trading, if you have this information on your chart, you know where your stop is uh, is likely to be. If you want to make it tight, you could have put it down here under the S2. If you want, um, if you want to make it even tighter, you could have even put it very, very close to. Uh, this support line here and you literally just let it run with the Renko you let it run eventually as as always a, when a trend is coming to a pause point what happens is it will go into a congestion I know we get you know re, you know dramatic um, v-shaped reversals and what is that a little the 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 uh, opposite of the v-shape at the top but generally speaking with price action it will go into a congestion and then perhaps break to uh, the other side and this what this is what happens with price action on all time frames so that was uh, that was the um, that was cable and of course the the final thing with having levels is they also give you an objective a price target a price objective where is this price where is this uh, uh, price action likely to stop or pause that's what levels do. That's what the levels are there for. They're not just to help you with uh, having an understanding of the price structure on the chart, but they're also there to help you with your stop loss, but also to help you, well, you know, where is this going to? And once you get to one level on, this is a three minute chart, and it, perhaps it goes through, you say, well, where's it going next? You move up to the next of uh, the next time frame i've got the five minute chart here if this had gone higher well where was the next logical stopping point well possibly this this zone here this uh this is uh, this is part of uh, the volume point of control ultimately if it did go higher it would go to the high at 13280 but if you combine that with the levels that we see on that derived from the Camarilla, we've got 32, we've actually got 3270, uh, which is uh, the R4. The fourth level on the uh, Camarilla is actually a very important level. So even though you've had volatility, even though you've had, um, you know, markets not really knowing how to re react to, you know, what Jay Powell has said, and it's perfectly, you know, the, markets aren't logical at, at the best of time they're all driven by emotion once everything calms down you can take a, a, a um, you know you step back you take a cool look at what the chart is telling you and you trade what you see on the chart and as i said i think the uh, cable is a really nice example of that